and welcome to the Good Life Atlanta Knows Best. I'm Ashley Fairley with South Atlanta Homes and Lifestyles, and I'm here today with my co-host, Terry Marie Gleaton. Hi, how are you doing today? Welcome, welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk to potential sellers mm -hmm. out there. If you have your house on the market or if you're contemplating putting your home yes. on the market, we're going to talk to you today about do's and don'ts. And don'ts. <laughs> Right, because to, it's a fabulous time to list your home here in Metro Atlanta. The market is so hot. Oh, my gosh. It's so hot. It is a seller's market and it's on fire. Yes. So we're going to give you a couple of tips because I know you just had a closing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just listed two homes on Friday. OK, so we so. list. Yeah, we listed two properties. And between those two properties, we've already received 19 offers within 48 hours. So the market is, is super hot. And listen, some of these offers are way above mm -hmm. list price. Some of these offers are cash buyers. Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit of, about the selling side of this closing. How much was that closing? And what were the good, the bad, the ugly that, that was a takeaway for you? Yeah, that one, um, actually our most recent one, that one was 315. Okay. okay. Um, and now it, <laughs> it actually, that was a new construction one. Um, so that one was a little bit different, not as much pressure as your resales, you know, mm -hmm. but before that, I mean, um, I have buyers right now that are closing soon and it has been a madhouse. I mean, you know, every home, the competition is there, you know, where, you know, before as buyers, you could go through and kind of be picky and say, oh, I want this way, I want this that way and I want this, this, that. It's just not that way right now. It's not. It's you, really you not. know, it, it's just your your deal is getting in that house. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? That's getting right. in that house, getting that equity. So it's just it's just wild out here. It's really. wild out here. So what does that mean to a seller? Right, Ashley? Like you want to get the most uh, bang mm -hmm. for your buck. Uh, you want to take advantage of the top of the market. What's going for on sure. right now? Because you have a lot of things that are in your favor as a seller. Right now, it's historically low interest mm -hmm. rates. So the buyers are fighting. Ashley oh, yeah. just told you they're fighting like crazy uh, to get into your home. So there's a few things that we want to educate mm -hmm. you on. And we want to start with pricing. Yes. All right. So pricing is going to be the most important part uh, of your home. So you want to get with a good realtor that can give you a quality net sheet. Right. And what is a net sheet? A net sheet is where we do the numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not just a pretty face. <laughs> no. <laughs> That helps, but <laughs> you're going to give you your numbers. That's right. Yes. We want to go over what do you owe on your mortgage? Mm -hmm. How much are your taxes? What is it going to look like? What's left in your escrow? What responsibilities do you have on your side, on the seller side? Are you paying commission? Mm -hmm. Are you paying closing costs? Are you buying a home warranty? What are all the fees that are going to come out on your side? Let's, yeah. let's tally that up because I personally had a client. This was just six days ago. I had a client that wanted to sell a home in Hayville, and they had reached out to the all infamous I buyers. Oh. Right? What is an I buyer? Those big guys that say, I'll pay cash for your house and take mm -hmm. it just how it is. And the best deal that the I buyer could give my client was 160. But I got that same house sold for $210,000. Wow. So a lot of times, cash right now mm -hmm. sounds great. You know, oh, you don't have to move out of your home right mm -hmm. away. Or, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, you don't have to worry about cleaning up, no showings. But that's not the, yeah. always the take best. It, take advantage. Take advantage of the momentum. Take advantage of the excitement. You know, get your home ready to be sold. Even though, you know, we're getting the multiple offers and the inventory is low, still do those things to prepare your home. Like Terry's saying, we're going to make sure you know your numbers on the front end so that you're prepared. You don't want to get into the multi-offer situation and then you're trying to figure out your numbers. You want to set yourself up for success from the beginning to get the most that you possibly can get. Right. And so when you get with a realtor, a great realtor, I know a great realtor. Yes, I do Ashley. too. <laughs> Oh, and Terry. Yes, and Terry. <laughs> right. So we know two really great realtors. So we could come out and mm -hmm. do a full assessment. And not only will we go over the numbers, we're going to give it to you straight. Yes. Right. So we're also going to talk with you about what are the things that you need to do to prepare your home. And the first thing is you don't want to wait until you have a buyer and they pull an inspection. Mm -hmm. That's not when you want to hear about what's going on, what's going on mm -hmm. with your house. You want to know prior. Yep. So you want to do a full assessment 
of potential repairs that your home yep. may need because those are going to be negotiating factors exactly. for the buyer. Exactly. Right? The more you know, you can take that away from being used against you, you exactly. know, in those negotiations. Those exactly. Brands. What were some of the things that some of your buyers got um, that you discovered in the um, inspection period? Um, it just honestly delayed maintenance. People mm -hmm. are bad about not keeping up with things like their gutters, making sure that the HVAC has been recently serviced. Um, really, it's just general home maintenance. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys really have to make sure that you are keeping up with the maintenance on all the systems of your home, your mm -hmm. HVAC, your plumbing, your electrical. Get someone out every couple of years to let, check out those systems in addition to the pre-listing you know, pre inspection right. so that there's no surprises because the buyers are going to be concerned about those items and they're going to ask. They're going to, you know, they're going to want to know that those things are taken care of. Right. What, what is your take on the clutter? Uh, and the person, the personals, right? What's yes, your take on we that? have, we gotta, we gotta be, per we gotta declutter and we gotta depersonalize, guys. Like it, it is really distracting. I mean, I've had buyers. We've gone in a house and literally, they're like, "Okay, we can go, just walk right back out." Mm -hmm. You know, because what it's just the, too like, much. The stand out, just too much. It's it's just, it's just very specific decor. Like if you have a very um a very um certain style that you like, and it's just everywhere. Like, for example, people that like to collect things like cats or something. You have cat figurines, you know, all over the house. Like that is going to be really distracting for a buyer. As well as speaking of cats, I had a, I showed a house. There was literally cats coming out of everywhere. Every room we went in, a cat ran out. Like it, it was like we didn't know where they were. The cat house. Like it, they were coming out of everywhere. So de things like that. Secure your pets. You just don't want to have anything to distract these buyers. You want to get the top, top, top um, value for your property. And anything you can do to help that is going to only be to your benefit. Right. Because there's a multitude of buyers, mm -hmm. but there's only one of your house. Correct. Right? Only one of your house. So you have one opportunity to make the mm -hmm. first impression, the best impression on those buyers that are coming by. Because the more people can envision living in your home, the more that they'll, they'll pay. Really, they'll pay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, because I, too, you know, work a little with buyers. Mm -hmm. I mainly focus with sellers, you know, but I work with a lot of buyers. And that's one of the things they say. I got to I got to be able to see myself mm -hmm. living in this gotcha. house. So if you know that you're going to sell your home, the declutter part can actually be a fun process for you mm -hmm. to help transition to your next new mm -hmm. home. It's a great way for you to start eliminating things that you're not going to want to take with yep. you anyway. You know, weekly start filling up those trash bins, you know, and getting things out of your home so you won't have to worry about moving those items because mm -hmm. who wants to pack up trash anyway, right? So go ahead in the declutter process and, and the clothes. I love the Oprah thing. You know, mm -hmm. Oprah taught me long ago how to declutter my closet. Mm -hmm. She said, go in your closet. And if you haven't worn it in one year, get rid of it. Get rid of it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Except for shoes, ladies. <laughs> yeah, shoes, shoes and bags. It's a, it's a little bit different little category. Different. Yeah. Right, right, right. But That's, clothes, yes. Yes, clothes, yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, definitely declutter, set the stage, make sure your home looks like someone else can just move right in. That's, that's, that's right. what they want to see. The, that's the, you're going to get the top dollar by, you know, presenting your home in that way. Um, what about um, offers? What are you oh, seeing yeah. with offers? What, what, should, what should buyers be preparing themselves for with offers? So if you're a buyer and you're coming to my seller uh, with an offer, mm -hmm. I will tell you the type of financing that you are receiving does play mm -hmm. a role in a lot of sellers' decisions. Um, some people feel, oh, you know, they're discriminating. No, they're, they're picking the best offer. And right now, cash and conventional yes, are and best and stronger offers uh, because with FHA financing, sometimes there's repairs mm -hmm. that the FHA appraiser is going to ask for. And a sell, if a seller doesn't have to do repairs to then sell their not. home, then they're not. Yep. So you have to be prepared uh, with the type of financing that you're going to be presenting to my seller. You've got to look good. Um, if you're asking for closing costs, then you're going to be on those higher end offers, mm -hmm. not the lower end. Uh, because typically with cash buyers, that's why they're so competitive because they don't need closing yep. costs, right? And so that kind of makes the playing field rougher for those buyers that need 
conventional and FHA financing. So those are some of the things you want lower due diligence. Mm -hmm. So if you're truly a buyer that's in the market, ready to go, ready to get out there and win that bid, you've got to be ready to go. So oh, yeah. you shouldn't need 30 days due diligence, 15 days due diligence. Our sellers are looking for who's ready to go and, 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 yep. and needs five days due diligence, one week due diligence. And that due diligence gives the buyer the opportunity to do their inspection, uh, take their measurements and make sure mm -hmm. this is a good fit for them. And so those are some of the pointers that I would give any buyer that's presenting a, a, an offer to one of my clients on the selling side. Uh, make sure it's strong. Make sure that closing cost is, is capped and limited or you're going high above. enough mm -hmm. above uh, to cover and make your offer competitive with those cash buyers. Quick closes. Make sure that your uh, lender that's going to be financing the deal is prepared to take a phone mm -hmm. call from a listing agent. Oh, yeah. You know, because if I call, uh, it, you know, if, if you have provided me with a pre approval letter from, say, XYZ Mortgage, and then I call XYZ Mortgage because my seller has identified that they really like your offer the best, well, I'm going to vet you for mm -hmm. my seller, yep. right? And I don't know you personally. So the only way to vet you is to call your lender and say, hey, What's you know, on? is Mr. Jo John Doe, Mrs. John Doe, is she ready to go? Is mm -hmm. she strong? Is she out of underwriting? How, how quickly can you get to table? How quickly is your underwriting process? Do you have a team to support you so that my client's home uh, is likely going to close if we select uh, your buyer? So those are the things. And if, if, if that lender says, who is that? I don't know, Mr. Not Joe. Good, yeah. You know, I'm like, what? Well, you you provided a pre-approval letter. That tells me there's a disconnect mm -hmm. between the lending and you. So you may not be the strongest offer. And so, yeah. you know, sometimes you never take real estate personal, even though it is the largest investment of most people's lives. You don't want to take real estate personal. Correct. Right? Yeah. You, you got to allow people to be where they are, because if they're not a good fit for you, somebody else is coming along. For sure. And I think I think that's a great um, a great way to tie in the, the tips that we gave, you know, sellers. This this is what you can demand when you implement the tips that we just gave as far as pricing, um, setting the stage, making sure your property is in the correct condition. So we just wanted to come to you, just bring you a couple of quick tips today yep. from our The Good Life Atlanta Knows Best crew. It's just us ladies today. Um, and we want to thank you for watching us. Um, definitely like, subscribe, share, comment. We love interacting with you guys. And we'll see you guys on next time. All right. Bye-bye.